Bram Stoker was born on November 8, 1847 in Dublin, Ireland. His father, Abraham, and his mother, Charlotte, gave birth to seven children. In 1864, at the age of 17, Bram enrolled at the University of Dublin, attending Trinity College. Six years later, he graduated, earning his degree in mathematics. He was soon hired as a civil servant for Irish royalty. However, he had a second job, which was writing reviews on local theatrical plays. Around 10 years later, Stoker left his job as a civil servant due to a job offer by his friend Sir Henry Irving. Irving was a very famous English actor, and he owned a production venue in England. The venue, called Lyceum Theatre, was in western London. There, Stoker's job was to act as manager and compose many letters to Irving every day. Stoker was inspired during his time with the arts, so he decided to publish his first novel in 1865 a horror called The Primrose Path. He later on published Under the Sunset and The Snake's Pass while still working as a theatrical manager. In 1897, Stoker published Dracula, which was a success right off the bat. Its fame continued to grow, making it one of the most famous classics today. Stoker went on to publish many other novels, but none were as popular as Dracula. When Irving died in 1905, Stoker's job as manager ended after an almost 30-year career. Seven years later, on April 20th, 1912, Stoker died in London. His legacy is carried on through his works today. Ever since Bram Stoker published the novel Dracula in 1897, the title character has remained an important figure in popular culture. During the second half of the 20th century, Dracula spawned the creation of a vampire subculture with over 200 films featuring the Count. This number of adaptations is second only to Sherlock Holmes. Dracula was made popular by exploring taboos and exploiting the fears of a nation. With the French Revolution relevant, it highlighted the fight between democracy and monarchy. It also showcased science's effect on religion and how women play a part in society. Dracula can also be seen as expository literature. Expository literature is a form of literature that is written to describe, explain, give information, or inform. Our story begins when the charming lawyer by the name of Jonathan Harker travels to Transylvania to help Count Dracula acquire a property in England. Harker discusses much of English history with the Count, and has long talks with him through the night. Harker is suspicious, though, since Count Dracula's mansion does not have any servants, and Dracula has the ability to talk to wolves. Dracula also creepily sneaks out of the house at night. John realizes he's a prisoner of Dracula, and tries to escape, only to be seduced by three sexy vampire ladies who try to drink his blood. Luckily, Dracula flies in last minute to save the day. Harker bolts from the castle and tries to make it back to England, but contracts a case of brain fever and rests in a coven to be taken care of. Meanwhile, in Harker's hometown, his bright-minded fiancée Mina hears that her friend Lucy has received three marriage proposals, one from John Seward, an asylum doctor, one from an American Quincy Morris, and another from Arthur Holmwood. She accepts Arthur, Dracula arrives in England, but has not yet revealed himself. He begins possessing Lucy and drinking her blood in the night, and Renfield, a patient of Seward's, starts eating spiders, claiming that his master is coming. Lucy's fiancé is concerned, and Dr. Seward calls for Van Helsing to help crack the case. Van Helsing knows of the supernatural, and discovers Lucy's worsening condition is due to a vampire. He performs many blood transfusions and forces Lucy to sleep with garlic in her bedroom so Dracula will not disturb her in her sleep. But Lucy dies. In order to put Lucy out of the misery of turning into a vampire, she is stabbed in the heart and beheaded, and now she will rest in peace. Mina hears of Jonathan and his disease and travels to the convent he's resting at and marries him. All the other boys, Seward, Morris, Van Helsing, and Holmwood, vow to join forces with John and Mina to kill Dracula once and for all. Mina stays at Seward's office while the men are vampire hunting, and Renfield invites his master, Dracula, into the asylum, allowing Dracula to start drinking Mina's blood. The men walk in on Dracula attempting to force Mina to drink his blood. 
Dracula sends the hunting crew on a wild goose chase that sends them back to Transylvania, where they all discover Dracula was transporting boxes with Transylvanian dirt to his new English property to make more vampires. The goal is to kill Dracula before Mina turns into a vampire, and the group successfully does so, but at the cost of Quincy's life. Many years later, John and Mina have a baby boy and name him Quincy in honor of Morris. In the third chapter of Dracula, Jonathan is quoted as saying, The old centuries had, and have, powers of their own which mere modernity cannot kill. The old centuries or monarchy are symbolized by Dracula, while modernity or democracy is symbolized by characters like Quincy Morris, an American who sacrificed himself for others. Bram Stoker seems to be suggesting a marriage between scientific and religious ideas. He does this by incorporating objects like crosses and holy water into the story as important elements. He also does this with objects like typewriters and phonographs. In fact, Seward's diary in Chapter 5 is written using a phonograph. Women's sexuality is seen as dangerous, with Stoker implying that it is better for women to be traditional. Mina is seen as traditional when it comes to sexuality whereas Lucy is anything but. And when Jonathan sees Dracula's brides in chapter 3, he tells the reader, There was something about them that made me uneasy, some longing and at the same time some deadly fear. Stoker provides two different types of women, traditional homemakers and progressive career women. Mina has two careers that are usually taken up by men, a clerk at a law firm and a schoolmistress. Lucy, on the other hand, is married and quoted in chapter 5 as saying, I suppose that we women are such cowards that we think a man will save us from fears, and we marry him. In Dracula, they are both good and bad immigrants. In chapter 2, Dracula himself says, I long to go through the crowded streets of your mighty London and all that make it what it is. But when he finally gets there, he wreaks havoc on the city. However, Van Helsing is a Dutch immigrant that gives answers to save a group of British people and Quincy Morris gives his life for the same group. This implies that there may be some bad immigrants, but immigration is good as a whole.